Okay, this is part two. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to determine the velocity and acceleration vectors and spherical coordinates. Um, in part one, I, I defined spherical coordinates. I defined, and most importantly, I wrote the position vector in terms of the spherical variables with the Cartesian unit vectors, and that's pretty important. So here's my uh, R vector in terms of Cartesian coordinates. And why would you do that? Uh, because, uh, and one note here, I'm measuring uh, this phi is from the z-axis and theta is in the xy plane. And some people switch those two. So if you're one of those people, I respect you. I just don't do it your way. And so you may at the end of this say all those thetas and phi's are backwards, and, I, and I'm cool with that. Uh, but but the, it, if you're just looking up the answer, you can look up the answer. So it's really about the process. So what I need to do to find the velocity in spherical coordinates is take the derivative of this with respect to time. And r, phi, and theta all change with time, and that's cool. But by writing it in terms of uh, x hat, actually, I want to get I want to get this. Okay, so the velocity is dr dt. If I take in spherical coordinates, the position vector is just r r hat, right? Because I'm going from the origin to the particle in the r hat direction. When I take the derivative, I get r dot, which is the derivative of r respect to t times r hat, but then I have to take the derivative of r hat because it also changes directions. So I have r dr hat dt, and that's what I need to find. What is dr dt? dr hat dt. In order to do that, I need to write r hat in terms of Cartesian coordinates, because in Cartesian coordinates, I have x hat, y hat, and z hat do not change with time. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this with respect to time. Okay, let's go. I'm going to start a new piece of paper. That was my introduction. Uh, I am going to write this. Let's just write this. r hat equals sine phi cosine theta theta x hat plus sine phi sine theta y hat plus cosine phi z hat. Oh, that's a hat. That's fine. Uh, now, things do get a little messy, so just hang on. Things might get a little bumpy. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this with respect to time. dr hat dt. Now, remember, phi changed with time theta changes time, but the unit vectors here do not. So since I have two terms here, I have to do the product rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. The derivative of sine phi with respect to time is going to be equal to cosine phi. But I need to take the derivative of the inside, too. I need to take the derivative of phi. So I'm actually going to get phi dot. And remember, just a note, phi dot equals d phi dt. OK, so I'm going to represent derivatives with respect to time as with a dot. A second derivative would be phi double dot. It just, it just looks cool and it's useful. That's a dot. And then I get cosine phi and then I have to multiply by cosine theta and then I have x hat. But now I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time. So I'm going to get plus theta dot times, oh it's actually going to be minus because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I get negative sine, then I got to take the derivative of the inside, which is theta, derivative of theta, which is theta dot. So I get minus theta dot sine phi sine theta x hat. Now I need to do the same thing over here. I have the derivative of sine of phi is going to be equal to plus phi dot cosine phi sine theta y hat. Now I need to take the derivative of that thing, so I get uh, plus, I'm putting the derivatives up front, the time derivatives, theta dot sine phi, uh, that's cosine theta, cosine theta y hat. Now I finally have this one, that one's pretty easy, it's just going to be minus phi dot sine phi z hat. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, we have some things here. We have phi dots and theta dots, right? I'm going to get all the phi dot terms together and all the, the theta dot terms together. Uh, and let's see how that works. So I'm going to say theta dot 
which ones have theta dot? That one. So I get minus sine phi sine theta x hat. I got to include the unit vector. Here's another one plus sine phi cosine theta y hat. That's it. And then I'm going to say plus all my phi dot terms. So I have phi dot. So this one cosine phi cosine theta x hat that one plus cosine phi sine theta y hat and then this last one minus sine phi o z hat okay so if we think back we actually i can actually factor out a sine phi here. There's some tricks here, right? I can factor out a sine phi and I get sine negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. And look at this. That is theta hat. So we got lucky there. Okay, so this is going to be uh, theta dot times sine phi times. What am I? What am I doing? Times theta hat. Gosh, it's confusing. And what about this term? This term, check this out. It's that term, right? It's phi hat. So this all becomes, I have theta dot sine phi, and then everything left is sine theta x hat, cosine theta y hat. So that's going to be equal to theta hat. And then this one is uh, plus phi dot, and that's just phi hat. And that's dr dt, dr hat dt. That's super important. So let's put a box around it. OK, now let's move on to um, phi hat. I'm going to do phi hat next. So I need to start with my definition of phi hat right here. Okay, so I'm going to write that out. I say phi hat equals cosine phi cosine theta x hat plus cosine phi sine theta y hat minus sine phi z hat. So now I can take the derivative of this with respect to time. So if I do that, I get the derivative of phi hat with respect to time. OK, so this first term has two parts. I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time. So it's going to be negative sine theta, sine phi. And then I need to take the derivative of the inside, so I get phi dot. So I get negative phi dot sine phi and then have this stuff left over cosine theta x hat. And remember, the derivative of x hat with respect to time is 0. It doesn't change. Now I need to take the derivative of this part right there, and I get minus theta dot cosine phi sine theta x hat. Now I need to do this one. So I get minus phi dot sine phi sine theta y hat, I need to take the derivative of this term right here, and I get plus theta dot cos. I try to keep all the terms in the same order. I don't know if you notice that. Cosine phi cosine theta y hat. So I took, took the derivative of this one, I got that. Okay. And then I have this last term, the derivative of that's going to be negative phi dot cosine phi z hat. OK, again, let's get all the phi dot terms together uh, and the theta dot terms together. Yep. OK, so here is a phi dot. So I'm going to get uh, phi dot times negative sine phi cosine theta x hat. Here's one. Minus sine phi sine theta y hat, 
and then here's one, minus phi dot cosine phi z hat. And then I'm going to say plus all my theta dot terms, so I have theta dot, here's one, minus cosine phi sine theta x hat plus cosine phi cosine theta y hat. Yep. Okay, so right here, let's just take this term. I can factor out, um, what can I do? R hat, R hat. Let's go back up here to R hat. This is, there's some tricks here, right? Because you could play around with this a lot. Uh, so if I look at R hat, I have sine phi cosine theta. And here you see I have sine phi cosine theta x hat, sine phi sine theta y hat. Uh, oh, this is not, I factored that out. And that's cosine, this this is negative r hat. So this whole thing becomes negative uh, phi dot r hat, this whole thing. Okay. And then what about this one? Well, I can factor out a phi, cosine phi, cosine phi. So this becomes uh, cos, uh, theta dot cosine phi times sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat, and then that, that's a negative, I'm sorry, that is theta hat. So this is going to be equal to, so the whole thing, d phi hat dt is going to be equal to negative phi dot r hat plus theta dot cosine phi theta hat. I'm just checking to see if that's right. Yep. Awesome. Okay, that one wasn't too hard. I mean, you have to kind of like see, say, oh, look, I, I, that looks like R hat, right? So you got to, if you work through it, you can kind of remember because you just did that. Uh, and then this too, remember, oh, it only has a theta and X hat and Y hat. That's, that's just like theta hat. So, okay, so we got, now the, the last one's a little bit harder. And that's uh, theta hat, <clears throat> which doesn't seem like it would be the hardest, but it has got the, uh, to me, it's got the biggest trick in there. Okay, so let's write theta hat. Theta hat is equal to negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. So the derivative of that with respect to time, d theta hat with respect to t, is going to be equal to, I have to take the derivative of this with respect to time. And so the derivative of sine with respect to theta is going to be cosine theta, but I have to take the derivative of the inside, so I get theta dot. So I get minus theta dot cosine theta x hat. That's it. And now over here, I need to take the derivative of this. I get minus theta dot sine theta y hat. Okay, so now let's... I mean, the question is, how do I get this in terms of r hat, phi hat, and theta hat, right? That's the key. So let's just play. Let's just write, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write, there's a trick, warning trick. So I'm going to write uh, sine phi times r hat. Because you you see what I want to do is, I want to get something, this, this is not... Um, this is not theta hat, right? Because I got the sine and the cosine backwards, so it's something different. Let's just take r hat. I'm right there. There's my r hat. And I'm going to multiply it by sine phi. So I'm going to get a sine phi squared, sine phi squared, and then a sine phi cosine phi. So it's going to be equal to sine squared phi cosine theta x hat plus sine squared phi sine theta y hat plus sine phi cosine phi z hat. And you notice right here that I can actually factor out uh, a sine phi. So this is going to be equal to 
sine squared phi times cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. And then I have this term over here, which is going to be plus sine phi cosine phi z hat. Now let's take uh, another trick, and that is cosine, you've got to underline it, it's a trick. So you got to uh, take cosine phi times phi hat. Okay, so phi hat, if you remember, if I multiply this by cosine phi, I'm going to get cosine squared phi, cosine squared phi, and then you'll notice, see what's going to happen here, but negative sine phi, cosine phi. Okay. So I'm going to write this as, uh, let's just write it as, I'm going to factor out the cosine phi. I'm going to skip a step. I probably shouldn't skip a step. I'm not going to skip. Should I? Hmm. I think it's okay. So I can factor it. If I, if I get two cosine squared phi's, because that's what I'm going to get, I can factor that out. And so I'll get cosine theta, sine theta, y hat. So that's cool. Okay, so I will, I will skip a step. So it's going to be cosine squared phi, and then I'm multiplying by phi hat. I get cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. And then I get minus sine phi cosine phi z hat. So now if I take this and this and add them together, what do I get? Well, I get this term right here. These two terms cancel. Okay, so I get sine phi r hat plus cosine phi phi hat. Now, these have the same term in there. So I actually can factor that out. So I'm going to say this is equal to cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat times this stuff, which is going to be sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. Oh, look what's happening. Not only did this cancel with that, but now I have a sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi, which is equal to 1. So this whole thing is equal to cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. And that is what I have up here. So that means d theta hat dt is going to be equal to uh, negative theta dot times cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat, but this is just equal to this. So it's going to be negative theta dot sine phi r hat minus theta dot cosine phi phi hat. Is that right? I think that's right. Okay, so let me write all three of these together uh, just for completeness. Uh, and then I will stop because th the last thing I can do is use these time derivatives to find the velocity and acceleration. Okay, so I have, um, I guess, dr hat dt. Where did that one go? I boxed it, so it was important, right? It's down here. theta dot sine phi phi hat plus phi dot phi hat d and then the second one I did was I did d phi hat d phi hat dt negative phi dot r hat plus theta dot cosine phi theta hat. And then finally I have d theta hat dt, which I just did. There it is right there. It's minus theta dot sine phi r hat minus theta cosine phi phi hat. And there are your time derivatives. So now when I when I write the velocity, when I write the position vector in spherical coordinates and I have to take the derivative of these things, I can do it. Okay, but I'm going to do that in the next video because I do want to break these things up. Okay, so one more video, and that's what's the position, velocity, acceleration, and spherical coordinates. The end.